much for introducing me, and thanks everybody for attending today's seminar and the presentation today. It's about the validation and use of Excel and similar spreadsheet programs in regulated environments. And the seminar, as always, should give you a good understanding of the requirements. And also, I will talk about the missing functionality of out-of-the-box Excel for compliance and how compliance can be built in into your spreadsheets. And then, especially with the help of the reference material, you should be able to easily implement compliance for Excel applications in all your entire, entire organization. So the uh, main purpose of this slide is to show you my email show address. You so my if you have any question uh, at the end of the seminar, when the seminar is finished, uh, you can send me an email, or you can also send a question to compliance trainings, and uh, they will forward to me. But uh, you are not left alone in case you have any questions when you are to start to work on this Excel implementation. Okay, this shows the agenda of the day, it shows an overview of today's seminar, and I will start with FDA requirements, also some business requirements, which make sense to validate Excel spreadsheets. I will then continue with some recommendations from the FDA and then go right into the design phase of spreadsheets. Yes, we start with the design before we validate. Next, we talk about the validation during development and installations, and I will talk about integrity and security of spreadsheets, how the FDA is using spreadsheets. Yes, the FDA is using Excel spreadsheets in the entire 14 laboratories, and I also will talk about documentation requirements, and I will... Um, include uh, at the end will conclude the seminar with the examples on some configurations uh, which make it uh, for example part 11 compliant okay so I go to the next one here yeah this is a slide number four which has a couple of reference material which is listed on a dedicated seminar website uh, here I only will discuss the most important ones for example I recommend you look at the first one here uh, this is a specific manual, I mean, which is uh, which I did develop by myself uh, to help you define the useful functions for compliance and quality. It's about maybe 20 pages long, so it's quite useful. Then I have uh, two SOPs which are quite relevant to the purpose of today's seminar, like development and use of spreadsheets for regulated environments. And the other one is just for validation of spreadsheet applications. I have another one, change control. Uh, I think this is also important because um, you because uh, it's so easy to change Excel spreadsheets, so it's very easy. So uh, if there is not a procedure on who can change it, who should authorize the change, uh, who should be informed about the change, who should be trained about the change, and all the things, uh, this will be a big mess. And that's the reason I have included this SOP also. I also have a checklist. I think checklists, I think they are quite useful to make sure, I mean, not, not to follow them and to do everything which is on the checklist, but not to forget the most important things. Um, uh, I have also two FDA, oh, at the moment there were three, they just came out with a new one, FDA laboratory information bulletin. This is uh, information documentation on how the FDA is using spreadsheets in their, for their own work. Uh, target, the target is not the industry, but they are also quite useful. And then I have a couple of FDA inspection reports, examples for FDA warning bills, which I will show you also. Okay, and here I mean there has the link at the bottom of the slide here, and if you if you click on it, you will be asked to enter password user ID, and uh, it's not not difficult to do because they are both listed here. And if anybody listens to the recorded version, I mean because at some point in time I take things away from my website, uh, at that point in time you can send me an email and I will upload for some time, maybe a week or so, which helps you. I think what is also very important, unfortunately I did, don't have it here, it means there are examples, validation examples for Excel spreadsheets, starting from planning up to reporting, including IQ, uh, operational qualification, performance qualification, and so on. Uh, so this will help you to guide you through the complete process of validating uh, and uh, because when you have examples, it makes it very easy just to replace it with uh, the numbers which are in. 
uh, with your own with your own real data. So this is very useful here also. Okay, so then we talk about the regulations. It shows a collection of reference of, of regulations uh, which um, require the uh, Excel spreadsheets to be validated. So these are all GXP regulations. They all require that systems should be suitable for the intended use. This means they should basically be validated. Uh, I think you know where the X stands for, for laboratory, for good laboratory practices, M for good manufacturing practices, and C for good clinical practice regulations. Uh, there is other, another regulation which is very important, United States C21 CFR Part 11, Electronic Signatures and Electronic Records. And uh, so this defines the requirements for electronic records and when you use electronic signatures also for electronic signatures on how to use those signatures and records in FDA regulated industries. There is a similar document available from Europe. In Europe it's called the Annex 11. It's a regulation. It's an, an, an appendix, an annex to the European GMPs, which has also the status and effect of a regulation. And uh, so this is it's a little bit more generic than Part 11. I mean, it's more a, a, a management system on how to deal with computer systems in regulated environments. And in the meantime, this document has also been adopted by PICS, Pharmaceutical Inspection Corporation, Co Convention Corporation Scheme, a member of this organization is United States FDA. Uh, they have adopted this also as a guidance document, so that's also very important to know. Okay, with this we go to the next topic here, and I have shown you a couple of requirements, a couple of regulations, and uh, so uh, these are these are access, access control here. I mean, a couple of requirements are common to all those regulations. For example, access control to systems and data. No matter whether you work for the FDA, no matter whether you work whether you work for the EMA, which is the European Medicines Agency, or any pick controlled agency like Singapore, like Canada, like Australia, uh, they uh, have some common requirement like the authenticity, data integrity is a very important confidentiality.